So then my friends, the first thing we're going to do is start work on the back end of the application to make an API. So that means we'll be setting up an express app using Node.js. And this express app is going to allow us to easily create an API for us to reach from the front end React application later on. And it's also going to be able to communicate with our database, MongoDB, to fetch any data it needs to send back to the browser as well. Okay then, so I've got open a brand new project in VS Code called Mern Stack. And inside this project, ultimately we're gonna have two folders, a folder for the backend code and a folder for the front end code, which is the React app. We're gonna start with the backend code, which is the Express app. So let's create a new folder and I'm gonna call this backend, but you can call it server or something else entirely if you wish, it really doesn't matter. And inside here, we're gonna create a new file called server.js. And this is kind of like the entry file for the backend application. It's where we're going to register the Express app. Now, the next thing we need to do is create a package.json file inside the backend folder. And that package.json file is going to allow us to keep track of dependencies and also register our own custom scripts. So I'm going to open up a terminal by pressing Control T, or you can go to terminal and new terminal. And then I'm going to CD first of all into this backend folder. So let me do that CD and then backend. Make sure you do that before you try to create this package.json file. Otherwise it's going to create it in the root mern stack folder. All right, so now I'm going to clear this to give me some room and I'll say npm init and then space and then hyphen Y. And when I do this, hyphen Y flag right here, it's going to automatically fill out all the answers to the questions for me. So I don't have to run through them in the terminal. So once I do that, we should see this package.json file right here. Cool. So the next step is to install the express package so that we can use that to create an express app. So again, open up the terminal. I'm going to clear this and I will say npm install and it's called Express. And by the way, before you try using NPM, you definitely need Node installed on your computer. Otherwise, none of these things are gonna work. So press Enter to install Express. Now, when that's installed, we can now create the Express application inside this server.js file. So the first thing we need to do is we need to require the Express package. And the way we do that in Node applications is by saying const and then whatever we want. So Express is equal to require and then in parentheses, whatever package we're requiring, and that's the express package we just installed. And uh, incidentally, you'll notice we have this node modules folder as well now. That's where the express package and all its dependencies were installed into. We don't need to go in there. All right, so now we've required that, we need to now start up the express app. And the way we do this is by saying const, and I'm gonna call this app, Call it what you want, doesn't matter. And I'm gonna set this equal to express, which we required right here. So this constant, and it's actually a function that we just invoke. And that creates an express app for us. Let me just do a comment right here, express app. And it's been stored now in this app constant. All right, so the next thing we want to do is listen for requests. We want to basically listen to a certain port number. So the way we do that is, first of all, let me do a comment, listen. If I can spell listen for requests, we're going to say app, which is this thing right here, then use a method called dot listen. And then in parentheses, we want to listen to a specific port number. We'll just say 4000. And then when it's done this, we're going to fire a function. And inside here, we can console dot log message, which is going to be displayed in the terminal down here. And that message is going to be listening on ports. 4000. All right, so I'm going to save this and now I'm going to run this file. Now to run a file, I could just say node and then the name of the file, which is server.js. And that is going to run a file. It's going to be absolutely fine. We can see now listening on port 4000. So it's working. But if I make a change to the file now, for example, if I just add some exclamations here and save it, then in order for this to work, we'd have to cancel out of this process and then run node server again. And now we can see the updated string right here. Okay, let me just change this because I've spelt it incorrectly and save that again. So an alternative is to use something called nodemon. So let me cancel out of this process and clear down here. And the first thing you want to do is make sure you have this nodemon package installed globally. And to do that, you can say npm install hyphen g and then 
node one and press enter that's going to install the package globally on your computer so you can use it anywhere i've already done it so i'm not going to do it again but once you've done that you can then say node mon and then the name of the file server.js and press enter and now it does the same thing it logs this to the console down here but now if i make a change to the file let me get rid of those and press save we can see that it detected that change and it re-ran the file and we see that new log down here so that's good it watches our files for us and it reruns the application whenever it detects a change so that's cool but i'm going to cancel out of the process again by pressing Control c and clearing this and what I'm going to do is go to the package.json file to create a new script. And this is going to be a dev script. So this is what I like to do sometimes. Create a script inside the package.json file. And then in here, I can say whatever script I want to run when I run the dev command. So it's going to be nodemon and then server.js. So now we can run this dev script right here. Down here, I can say npm run dev and that's going to do exactly the same thing for us okay so now it's listening on port 4000 and now whenever we make a change to the file it's going to rerun the script for us all right cool so now we have our express app right here we're listening to port 4000 for requests now we also want to react to requests so to do that we need to set up a route handler so i can say app dot get and then this is going to respond to a get request coming in and then we can specify a specific route for this get request. So I'll just say forward slash, and that means if I go to localhost port 4000, just forward slash, the root of the domain if you like, then it's gonna fire a function, which is the second argument right here, to handle that request. And inside here, we can take in the request object, which has information about the request, and also a response object, which we use to send a response back to the browser or the clients. So, what I'm going to do is use that response object to say response.json and this sends back a JSON string for us. And inside here, I'm going to say we have a property called message and then we'll just say welcome to the app like so. Let me just do a comment right here to say routes like so. Now, if all of this goes over your head, then you probably should check out my Node.js and Express course first of all. Remember, the link to that course is going to be down below the video. But anyway, now we have this route up and running, and let's try it out in a browser. So if we go to localhost port 4000 right here and press enter, that sends a get request to this URL to the server. The server responds with this JSON right here with the message property. So this is all working. So this is all working, but at the moment we're hard coding the port number right here in the server.js file, which is fine. But what I want to do is store any constants like this in an environment variable. And the benefit of doing this is that when you eventually push your projects to repositories like on GitHub, the environment variables can remain hidden and they're not visible in the code. Now that might not be a big deal when it comes to the port number for now, but when it comes to more sensitive information like a database connection string or an authentication secret, you don't want those things visible. So they're better off going in environment variables which will remain hidden. So the way we're gonna do this is by making a dot env file in the backend folder. And this is gonna store all environment variables. The only one that we want at the minute is the port number. So let's call this port all in capitals and let's set it equal to 4,000, no spaces between the environment name or the environment variable name rather and the value. So the idea is that when you're pushing your code up to something like GitHub, you add the .env file to your git ignore file. And then this file won't be pushed up. So everything in here remains private. So say we want to access now these environment variables in our code how do we do that well we need to do it with the help of a node package called dot env and we need to install that into our project down in the terminal and you'll need to cancel out of the node one process first of all to do this and you can do that by hitting Control c and then typing y and then install dot env by typing npm install dot env and then hitting enter so .env is a package that loads environment variables from a .env file into the process.env object available to us globally in a Node.js environment. 
And once this package is installed, we can then go ahead and use it in the server.js file to do that for us. All we have to do is require the package at the top and directly invoke the config method on it once it's been required. And this is the method that's going to attach those environment variables for us to the process object. So now what we can do is come down here and instead of just saying 4000, we can say process, which is a global object available to us in node applications and then say dot env and then another dot and then whatever the environment variable was called that we want to use. In our case, that's port all uppercase. And this is going to still be port 4000, but now it's being pulled from the .env file. Cool. So now we can preview this again by running the script down in the terminal. So let's do that. We'll say npm run dev, and this should run in turn nodemon and spin up our express application. All right. So in the browser, everything is still working the same way, which it should. Awesome. So at the minute, when we send a request in the browser, this is a get request. And since we've set up a get request handler, it's handling that request fine. But if we wanted to test out a post request or a delete request, which we will need for this application, then we're not gonna be able to do that directly from the browser by entering the address up here. Because like I said, when we press enter up here, it sends a get request. And if we wanna send post requests or delete requests, we're gonna to have to create some JavaScript on the front end to send those requests or before we have that front end, we could use a tool called Postman to try out those different routes and requests. So you can get that from postman.com forward slash downloads and download it right here. And what this allows us to do is kind of simulate different types of requests to our server. So get request, post request, delete request, patch request, etc. So this is what we're going to be using for the next few videos to test out any routes that we create for our API. So after you've downloaded and installed Postman, when you first fire it up, it might ask you to sign up or sign in or something like that. But when you get inside, it's gonna look something like this. It might look a bit different if you've got a slightly different version, but generally speaking, something like this. And to start a new request, we can click on this plus icon right here. We can select the type of request right here. So I'm gonna stick with get, and then we wanna enter in the address. So localhost, in our case, port 4000, and then just forward slash. So if I send this get request right now, we can see we get this JSON response down here. Now, what I'm gonna do as well is save all of our requests so that we can try them out later on as well. So to do that, we can just hit Control S to save it, or you can click on this save button right here and you can call it something if you wish. I just keep it as the address right here and then you can save it to a folder. Now I'm gonna save it to a new folder or new collection. So I'm gonna click on that and I'll call this Mern app like so, create it. So now we wanna save it inside the Mern app. And when we do that, we can see this folder over here, Mern app, and we can see this request. So it saved it and I can cross it off here. And if I wanna use it again in the future, I can click on this and send the request and voila, we get the response. So as we go through the rest of this course and we try out different types of requests, like post requests or delete requests to different endpoints, we're gonna send all of those requests in this folder so we can come back to them if we need them. So there's one last thing I wanna do in this video and that's to just register a little piece of middleware. Now middleware is a fancy name for any code that executes between us getting a request on the server and us sending a response. So this right here, this is technically middleware, this function. Now we can register some kind of global middleware in our Express app by saying app and then using the use method to use some middleware. And in here we pass a function which is gonna fire and this function will fire for every request that comes in. Now inside here we get access to three arguments, the request object, the response object and also a function called next, which we have to run at the end of this middleware in order to move on to the next piece of middleware. For example, if we sent in a request to forward slash, then this would run first of all, this middleware, and then if we don't use the next function, it would never go on to the next piece of middleware, this right here. So we have to invoke this when we're finished. Now, all I want to do is set up some kind of logger so that every time we get a request in the console, we can log out the path and we can also log out the request method like get, post or put, etc. So let me do that. I'm gonna say here console.log and then we'll use the request object to get the path. And then after that, we'll output the request 
dot method as well. All right, so let me just do a comment up here to say middleware. And also we need to run the next function at the end. So dead simple middleware, just so we can log out the requests that are coming in. So now if off screen, I start to make a few requests and then I open up my terminal, we can see that down here, we have a get request to forward slash. We have a get request to forward slash hello and a post request to forward slash hello. So it's just logging those requests as they come in and that might help us later on. So that's the Express app pretty much set up now. In the next lesson, what we're gonna do is register a lot of routes for the API, a bit like this.